Welcome to another installment of HeadFirst JavaScript Programming Teasers. In this installment, we're going to take a close look at this. And by this, I mean the special variable in JavaScript with the name this. Working with this can be tricky. I like to say that this is a little slippery because it can change values when you're not expecting it to. And kind of like when you slip on a banana peel, you can find yourself slipping on this, and before you know it, your code isn't working and you're wondering what happened. If you happen to slip on this, it's not always easy to debug your code and figure out exactly what went wrong. So in this installment of HeadFirst JavaScript Programming Teasers, we're going to take a look at how to keep track of what the value of this is in your code. We'll start by looking at some of the easy cases and then take a look at a few places where you can easily slip up and lose track of this. The first case we're going to look at is when you use this in global code. Global code is code written at the top level. In other words, it's code that's not nested inside a function. We can test the value of this at the top level easily just by displaying the value of this in the console. And we find that the value of this in global code is window. More generally, the value of this at the top level of JavaScript is the global object. In the browser environment, that global object is window. If you're running JavaScript in another environment, like Node.js, then the global object will be something else. In this video, we'll focus exclusively on JavaScript in the browser, so the global object will always be window. One thing to notice about this at the global level is whenever you create a global variable, that global variable gets added as a property to the window object. So you can refer to all global variables as properties of the window object, but you don't have to. Just the name works too, because the window object is used by default if it's not specified. So in this example, you can write this dot numbananas or just numbananas and both work and both refer to the same variable. Now let's see what happens when we move the code inside a function. You might think that this would have a different value inside a function, but when we run the code, we see that the value of this inside the function add banana is still the window object. And again, we can either use this.numbananas or just numbananas to refer to the variable. Next, let's take a look at a slightly more complex case, and that is the value of this in a method. A method is just a function that is a property of an object. So here we have a gorilla object that has a method eat, and we refer to this.hasBanana in the body of the method. The value of this is the gorilla object. Whenever you call a method of an object, the value of this is set to the object whose method was called, which in this case is gorilla. Okay, so far keeping track of the value of this has been fairly easy. So let's take a look at a couple of more complex situations in which we use this with objects. Before we had a gorilla object that was created using an object literal. But here we have a gorilla constructor function that we can use to make gorilla objects. So the first step in making a gorilla is to call the constructor function using the new operator. Unlike before, when we looked at the value of this in a function, the value of this in a function we call with new is not the global object window. Calling a function with new changes how this works. Now this is set to an empty object. That is the new object we're creating by calling this constructor function. And so when we display the value of this at the beginning of the constructor function, we see that it's an empty object. We then proceed to fill in that empty object by adding properties to it. So at the bottom of the constructor function, the value of this is now a gorilla object with two properties, has banana and a method eat. The object that is the value of this is then returned from the constructor function and assigned to the gorilla variable. Just like before with our gorilla object literal, the value of this in the eat method is determined when we call the eat method. So here, the value of this is set to the gorilla object we just made when we call the eat method. Now, clearly we can use our gorilla constructor to make more than one gorilla. Here, we're creating two different gorillas, Coco and Michael. And again, the value of this is set to the object whose eat method is called. So when we call coco.eat, the value of this in the eat method is the cocoa object. And when we call michael.eat, the value of this in the eat method is the michael object. 
So to keep track of the value of this in object methods, you need to know which object was used to call that method. Now let's change the code just a bit and call a function notifyEating from the eat method. This function is just going to check to see if the gorilla has a banana, and if so, alert us that the gorilla is eating a banana. It looks straightforward, but when you run the code, you won't see any alert message. You won't see an error either. So you might wonder what's going on. Well, here we found our first banana peel slip on this. You might think that when you call a function from inside a method, like we're doing here, that the value of this inside the function is going to be the same as in the method we call it from. But it doesn't work that way. Just like before, the value of this in a top level function is set to the window object. So what happens is that we check to see if window has a property has banana that is set to true. And it doesn't because has banana isn't a global variable. It's a property of the gorilla object. So we don't see the alert. To fix this problem, we can pass the value of this to the notify eating function. But we can't name the parameter of the notify eating function this because this is a special variable. You can't use it as a variable name or a parameter name yourself. If you try to do this, you'll get a syntax error. So instead, we'll name the parameter something else, in this case, gorilla. And this solution works perfectly. We pass the gorilla object into the notify eating function and then use that object to test to see if gorilla has a banana. And it does, so we see the alert. Now let's take a look at another situation when it's common to slip up on this. Let's say we have a page with a button and when we click the button, a banana is added to the page. And we keep track of the total number of bananas and update the text of the button to display how many bananas we've added so far. Here's the code for the page. We have the global variable num bananas, which we declare at the top. And then we have a function that's called once the page is loaded, which gets the button element from the DOM using its ID and adds a click handler to the button. So whenever we click the button, the function add banana is called. In add banana, we increment the number of bananas and update both the text of the button and add a banana image to the page, which I'm not showing the code for here. The important thing to notice here is that to update the text of the button, we can use this. Here, we're using this to refer to the button and change its text value by setting the inner HTML property to the text add a banana concatenated with the value of the num bananas variable. This situation looks kind of similar to the one we just saw where we were calling a top level function from a method and found that the value of this doesn't get sent along to the function unless we explicitly send it ourselves by passing it as an argument to the function. But what's happening here is a little different. When add banana is called, it's actually called as a method of the button object. And just like other object methods, the object whose method is called becomes the value of this in the method. So here, we're calling add banana as a method of the button object. So when you click on the button, this method gets called and the button object is passed along as the value of this. Now let's change the code just a bit. Let's say we want to use a function expression as the value of the click handler we assign to the button. So we can do other things before we call the add banana function. Here, we're assigning an anonymous function to button.onClick, computing some stuff, which I'm not showing, and then calling add banana from inside that function. But making this small change breaks the code. Now, when you click on the button, you still see a new banana image added to the page, but the text of the button is not updated with the number of bananas. So it looks like we have slipped on another banana and lost track of the value of this again. What's happening is now the function that gets called as the method of the button when you click the button is the anonymous function we've assigned to the onClick method. So the value of this inside that anonymous function is correctly set to the button. However, when we call add banana from inside that function, we're just calling it as a regular function, not as a method of an object. So inside add banana, this is now set back to the window object. And the line of code that assigns a value to the inner HTML property of this is now assigning a value to the wrong object, to the window object, which means that the text of the button doesn't change. Now, you might think that you can change the code in the anonymous function to call add banana as a method of the button. 
But that won't work because add banana isn't a method of the button anymore. It's just a regular function. So one solution is to pass along the value of this to the add banana function, just like we did before, making sure that we give the parameter a name other than this, like button, and we change the code in add banana to use that parameter to name instead. There's actually another solution we can use here. There are two methods in JavaScript, call and apply, that allow you to set the value of this when you call a function. Call and apply basically do the same thing. They call a function allowing you to set the value of this. The difference between them is just how you specify any arguments you want to pass to that function you're calling. Here, we're using the call method to call the function add banana and set the value of this in add banana to the button object, which is the value of this in the anonymous function where we make the call. Notice that add banana doesn't have a parameter. What we're doing here is setting the value of this behind the scenes. That way, whenever we use this in add banana, the value of this is the button object. So you can use the call method as an alternative to passing this into a parameter of add banana. This is just a brief look at the call method. So for more, check out chapter 13 of Headfirst JavaScript Programming. Now, keeping track of this as you write code in JavaScript is important. And as you've seen, this can be a little slippery at times. But once you wrap your head around how this works, you'll get the hang of it and keeping track of this will become second nature to you as you write code. There are some rules you can follow to help you keep track of this. So we'll sum up by reviewing these rules. And this is one of those cases where it's a good idea to memorize the rules. So as you're coding, you can have them in the back of your mind whenever you're dealing with this. First, whenever you're writing global code, that is code at the top level, this refers to the global object and in the browser, that's the window object. This rule also applies to the value of this in a function, unless you're calling the function as a method or you've explicitly changed the value of this using call or apply. Second, when you call an object method, this is the object whose method you called. And remember, this applies to event handlers on element objects too. Third, when you call a function with new, in other words, you're calling a constructor function, New creates an empty object and assigns that object to this in the function. So when you refer to this in that constructor function, you're referring to the object that New created for you. And finally, when you call a function with the call method, the value of this in that function is the value that was supplied as the first argument to the call method. So using call and apply are ways that you can get to control the value of this in a function. Well, that's it for this installment of Headfirst JavaScript Programming Teasers. See you again soon.